We can now bring in Dr. Chloe Brimicombe, a climate scientist at the Wegener Center University. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Are these repeated heat waves going to be the new normal? So um, we don't know what, uh, if you like, the new normal will be, but what we do know is that there has been an increased likelihood of these heat waves occurring with our changing climate. Um, and this means that they have increasing in intensity. So the temperatures we're seeing year on year are record breaking in regions um, and they're lasting longer as well, which you will have seen um, this summer in the Mediterranean, for example. It's been a very long period of heat there. And obviously, we've been talking about uh, temperatures in Europe a lot because we do have the fires blazing in parts of Europe, including in Greece. But it's not just Europe. It's also the United States. It's also parts of China. Yes. So uh, these global heat waves were caused um, as a result of a really bendy jet stream. Um, and basically what this has caused is a global heat wave. We have seen this occurring before. So, um, for example, we've seen this in 2020 in the August um, and also uh, in 2021 and then last year in 2022. So we have seen concurrent heat waves in different regions. And what we know from research is that that sort of event is also um, increasing in light likelihood the um the globe seeing these heat waves occurring in different regions all at once um, and also what we know is that we are seeing like wildfires because of the dry conditions um, and the winds they're spreading more even if they were caused by in the case of roads um, an arsonist which isn't always the case for all wildfires uh, and can you talk us through the impact of, for instance, if we do continue to see these repeated heat waves year on year, wildfires, etc., in, in Europe during the busy uh, summer months, this clearly will also have an impact on people's livelihoods, won't it? Yes, so this has an impact on people's health. So we know that these events um, particularly affect pregnant women, um, children, infants, um, those with pre-existing medical conditions, the elderly and outdoor workers. We see a rise in hospital emissions, specifically in these groups and lots of different health outcomes. But um, we also see a reduction in certain crop yields. So as a result of extreme heat, for example, cereal crops are apparently having a five year low in their yield at the moment. And also this affects livelihoods. So um, people um, like farmers may be affected because they'll have less because of yields. But then if someone's home is destroyed because of a wildfire, that might lead them to having to move or be in an evacuation centre away from their home for a long period of time. So this is all things we need to think of going forward, as well as tourism and the effect this will have on tourism in the region. Climate scientists have warned of the increased risk of, of cardiac arrest due to nighttime temperatures not coming down. Down, uh, fast enough uh, so people can essentially sleep well at night. Why is this so important? So, um, yeah, nighttime temperatures mean that it's cooler and this allows our body to have a respite from the heat. And so it can cause a rise in cardiac arrest. It can also lead to a rise in heat stroke or heat stress conditions. Um, and this is also sometimes the case if we have high levels of air pollution um, as well during a heat wave. Um, so it's really important to consider um, nighttime temperature and just having access to cooling for people. So whether this is improved ventilation and housing, shutters or air conditioning for the most vulnerable um, and water, these are all things we can do. We, I, I saw somewhere the temperatures in parts of China uh, breached 52 degrees Celsius. At what point uh, can, can humans survive because, you know, at 40, 42, 45, it, it starts to get tough. Yes. So the limit for human um, survivability is about 40 degrees Celsius with 50 percent relative humidity. So we've reached that limit in a couple of places in Iraq and Iran and that sort of region, but not for enough hours. So you'd have to be exposed to that as a healthy person for about six to eight hours or more without access to cooling. But we are seeing this sort of survivability within the uncomfortable range in multiple places, including in China, um, for many hours now. And it really shows that we need this um, mitigation of climate emissions by international 
corporations, governments and billionaires in particular who produce the most emissions so that these impacts don't get any worse. Um, and we know that without this, they will continue to grow um, and they will continue to impact um, wide regions of the world. Dr. Chloe Bimcom, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme today. Thank you.